All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to our uh, January uh, Understanding Our Wildlife Science Communication Webinar. I appreciate everybody being here. And uh, so with that today, uh, our presentation is Cooperating, Collaborating and Planning for Coastal Striped Bass Management. Uh, it's being presented by uh, Jeremy McCargo. Uh, Jeremy is our Anadromous Research Coordinator. Uh, and with that, uh, Jeremy, thanks for being here. Thanks for agreeing to do this presentation. Uh, and I'll turn it over to you. You can share your screen and get started. Thank you, David. And uh, thanks to everyone who's signed on today to, um, to listen to my presentation. As David mentioned, uh, the title of my presentation today is Cooperating, Collaborating, and Planning for Coastal Gas Management. Uh, this is an adaptation of a presentation that I gave to our fisheries committee uh, back in October to um, to give an overview and a, a status update of where we are on the fisheries management plan process uh, for estuarine striped bass in North Carolina. Um, so today the objectives of my presentation are to give an overview of that striped bass fishery management plan development, uh, a, a process that we undertake uh, with the North Carolina Division of Marine Fisheries. Uh, so we you know, cooperate with, with the Division of Marine Fisheries to provide uh, this fisheries management plan for a, a very important fishery uh, in several rivers of coastal North Carolina. Um, specifically, uh, as it pertains to that fisheries management plan development, I'll discuss the Albemarle Roanoke stock assessment and the modifications that we plan to make for the 2021 harvest season com coming up this spring. And I will briefly discuss on the striped bass management in the Tar Pamlico, Noose, and Cape Fear rivers as well. So just a little bit of background here. Striped bass is an anadromous species, uh, which means they live most of their lives in a, a saltwater, either estuarine or ocean environment uh, where, where they live as adults. And then uh, they migrate into freshwater rivers to spawn uh, and reproduce. And then those, those young fish will migrate back down the river and, and rear in the estuaries before making that spawning migration again as adults. Uh, in North Carolina, there are four major river systems that um, that have migrating anadromous striped bass um, shown on the map here in the northern part of the state. The Roanoke River uh, is the is the primary is the only spawning grounds for the Albemarle Roanoke striped bass stock, uh, which is a major uh, fishery and striped bass population within North Carolina, as well as the Atlantic coast. Uh, the Tar River, the next river down uh, to the south, also has a migratory population of striped bass that move uh, from the lower Pamlico River uh, up the Tar River each spring to attempt to spawn. And then uh, also the Noose River has another migratory population, uh, followed by the Cape Fear River in the southeastern part of the state, uh, also a small migratory population that uh, moves from the lower Cape Fear around Wilmington up to, up to Cape Fear to attempt to spawn each year. Um, the Wildlife Commission in Inland Fisheries Division is responsible for the survey and management of these striped bass populations when they make their spawning migrations uh, up the rivers into inland waters each spring. And of course, we also regulate their harvest um, when they are in inland, inland waters and are subject to our jurisdiction and our rules and regulations. Uh, before I, I talk more about the fisheries management plan process, I would like to take a, a brief minute to introduce the district staff uh, who conduct all the spawning area surveys for striped bass in each of the rivers. Uh, the first uh, crew that we have in District 1 is Katie Patoka and Chris Smith, who conduct the, the surveys on the Roanoke River each spring. And they, uh, they work tremendously with Division Marine Fisheries to compile all the data and collect all the data we need on that uh, important spawning population uh, in the Roanoke River. Our District 3 staff, Kirk Rundle, and uh, a new, new hire, David Belkowski, are in, in charge of sampling the Tar River uh, around Rocky Mount and, and all the way down to Tarboro uh, for striped bass migrating in the, into the Tar. Uh, in the Noose River, our biologist Ben Ricks and assistant T.D. Van Middlesworth uh, do a great job sampling striped bass and compiling all the data that we need in the Noose River. And then in the Cape Fear River, we have Kyle Rachels and assistant District 4 uh, biologist April Boggs uh, also do a great job sampling each week uh, in the Cape Fear River 
and really spending the bulk of their spring. All these all these district staff uh, spend a tremendous amount of time on the river each spring, uh, collecting all the data we need to manage these stocks of striped bass. So within North Carolina, um, in those spawning rivers, as well as the uh, estuaries that they inhabit outside of spawning season, we divide these areas into three management areas. Uh, the upper right there in the map you'll see is the Albemarle Sound management area. Also, the Roanoke River management area is a separate area where we, uh, where the Wildlife Commission regulates uh, the harvest and the management of striped bass. And then everywhere else south of those two management areas is included in what's called the Central Southern management area for striped bass. You'll notice the different colors of waters in this map. Uh, the light blue color are the coastal waters, which are the jurisdiction of the Division of Marine Fisheries. The sort of teal color uh, are inland waters, which is Wildlife Commission jurisdiction. And then all the red waters you see there are known as joint waters, in which we share jurisdiction of multiple species, including, uh, including striped bass. So because these, these uh, striped bass are migratory throughout North Carolina waterways and across uh, jurisdictional boundaries, it's a very collaborative plot process that we undergo to manage, to manage these fisheries. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we, we cooperate with Division of Marine Fisheries extensively on their management, and especially for the Albemarle Roanoke stock, which also migrates to the Atlantic Ocean, uh, we have to collaborate with the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission and multiple other state agencies that that are part of the marine fisheries the uh, atlantic states marine fisheries commission because they're subject to harvest and uh, in other state waters as well as north carolina um, in 1997 the the fisheries reform act and its subsequent amendments established the requirement that north carolina division of marine fisheries create fishery management plans for all important uh, commercially and recreational significant species that are in the jurisdictional waters of marine fisheries um, through that process, uh, Marine Fisheries develops the plans um, and submits them for formal approval by the Marine Fisheries Commission uh, before implementing the regulations and management strategies for each plan. Um, the Wildlife Resources Commission is not statutorily required to approve the fisheries management plan for striped bass or any of the other species that we might share jurisdiction on. However, we uh, contribute extensively to the plan development. Our, our Wildlife Commission field staff that I just introduced serves on the joint plan development team where we assist, assist with stock assessments, we write sections of the plan, and we recommend management actions. Um, the Wildlife Resources Commission Board of Commissioners will review the draft management plan, will often select preferred management measures for consideration, and then offer support for the plan. However, they do not statutorily uh, approve the plan. We will implement rulemaking as, as needed. So a little history on the striped bass fishery management plan. It was actually the first fisheries management plan to be developed under the 1997 Fisheries Reform Act and the original plan was approved in May of 2004. It's been, it was amended, what, which is called Amendment 1 and is, is the current version of the Fisheries Management Plan, uh, which we operate under uh, in May of 2013. And then there's been several revisions and supplements to that Amendment 1, uh, which have implemented several other management measures and reduced uh, quotas in the Albemarle Sound Roanoke River fishery um, and currently, we're working with Marine Fisheries to update the plan and produce Amendment 2, and that amendment is expected to be completed in February of 2022. Each fisheries uh, management plan must, con must contain a formal peer-reviewed stock assessment, also provide a characteristic characterization of the fisheries, including the commercial and recreational harvest of those stocks of fish. It has to uh, consider habitat and ways to improve uh, habitat that's existing or, or provide additional habitat to the benefit of the species. It also identifies issues and concerns that need to be addressed. And finally, we'll, we'll um, provide management strategies and recommendations, mostly in the form of regulations, but also in some form of uh, habitat improvements 
or other measures to improve the stock status. Um, the formal stock assessment process is really a complicated process, but to achieve a relatively simple outcome, and that is that outcome is the stock status uh, of 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 the stock of striped bass in this case, and whether the the fishery is overfished and whether overfishing is occurring. Overfish can be defined as the condition of a fishery that occurs when the spawning stock biomass is below the level that is adequate for the recruitment class of a fishery to replace the spawning class of the fishery. And overfishing is defined as the fishing that causes a level of mortality that prevents a fishery pr from producing sustainable harvest. In the case of the Albemarle Roanoke striped bass stock assessment, uh, we compile the data that you'll see in just a minute. Uh, per put it through a complicated statistical model to, a, to determine that the stock status of the Albemarle Roanoke striped bass population is overfished and overfishing is occurring. And subsequently, we have moved to reduce harvest in 2021 and 2022 under the current plan, current fisheries management plan. And also moving forward in the, in the new plan, we will implement management measures to continue to address the overfish status and, and, re, and eliminate overfishing from occurring in 2023 and beyond. So there's a lot of data that, that went into the Albemarle Roanoke stock assessment. Uh, the time series that we evaluated was 1991 through 2017. Uh, we evaluated fisheries depend, dependent data, which includes commercial harvest or landings. Uh, recreational landings, as well as dead discards from those all those fisheries. Um, we also have what we call fishery independent data, which are, are not related to the actual harvest of fish, but are the, the data that our field staff and DMF field staff collect um, by electrofishing and gillnet surveys. Uh, and those include on the right in the bulleted list there, the Division of Marine Fisheries Juvenile Abundance Index, as well as their gillnet surveys they conduct for adults in the spring and fall and winter seasons. And then the Wildlife Resources Commission Roanoke River Electrofishing Survey. Um, all those data were compiled. We look at length and age information to put into a, a mathematical model that results in fishing mortality rates or the, the rate at which fish are removed from the population by harvest as well as adult biomass, which is the uh, the pounds of fish that are in the adult population, adult abundance, which is in numbers of fish, and then the number of recruits or the number of new fish that are moving into the population through reproduction each year. And all those um, parameters that are estimated from the model give us the stock status determination. Take a couple of minutes just to show you the data that are that went into the model. Here's a, a chart of all the harvest or landings um, for the Albemarle Roanoke striped bass stock from 1991, in this case through 2019, although 2017 was the final year uh, that went into the stock assessment. Uh, on the left axis there, you see landings in pounds and pounds and year on the on the X axis on the bottom. The thin black line that sort of goes uh, horizontal and then the stair step up is the quota or the total allowable landings for the commercial fishery um, and the thin gray line is the quota for the recreational fisheries. So each each fishery is divided up between commercial and recreational and then the Albemarle Sound management area and the Roanoke River management area recreational landings are divided again. And so you can see throughout time harvest from the early 90s increased during the uh, from the 90s into the middle 2000s. And despite having a relatively high quota um, in the late mid to late 2000s, uh, harvest really fell off and we weren't able to meet that quota in any of those years really until we finally uh, reduced the quota in 2015. Um, and, and yet still uh, harvest was still fairly low uh, with the exception of the commercial fisheries meeting their quota from 2015 to 2019 in most years. Let's look at the Division of Marine Fisheries Juvenile Abundance Index, and this is an index of the of reproduction and recruitment from, from that current year. Uh, here the time series is 1955 through 2019. Again, we only looked at 1991 through 2017 in the, in the stock assessment, but this is the full period of record. And you can see there's variable recruitment with uh, the, the index value on the left axis and year on the bottom axis. Um, 
periodically we get these peaks in recruitment, which are really good year classes when conditions were, were adequate for successful spawning and reproduction. And in the mid 90s, throughout the 90s, we had several large year classes produced, followed by smaller year classes um, in, in given years. If we shorten the time series, this is the same data just from 1991 to 2019. Again, you can see these really high peak years. Uh, I I'm not sure if you can see my mouse pointer, but I'm right now I'm pointing at 2000 data, which was almost 60 fish per net haul, uh, which is the highest on, on record, I believe, um, at least in this time series. And then subsequently, though, throughout the 2000s and then the late 2000s, it really fell off. And where we're really concerned is the last three years, and, and even 2020 was, again, a very poor year where there was very little reproduction in 2017, 2018, 2019, and 2020. See a similar trend of increasing abundance in the Roanoke River electrofishing index uh, throughout the 90s and into the 2000s, followed by a decline in abundance in the 2010 decade, uh, down to some really low numbers in 2017 was the lowest electrofishing index uh, value on record. So we saw an expansion of the population uh, in throughout the 90s and, and large abundances in 2000s, followed by a decline in the late 2000s and 2010s uh, to where we are now at the end of the time series. We also saw that same pattern in old fish. This is a graph of our catch per unit effort or the fish we collect per electrofishing hour of fish that are nine years old and older. And you can see they were really rare in the early 90s. As the population uh, recovered from overfishing in the in the 80s and into the 90s, we saw a huge expansion of old, large old fish in the population in the mid 2000s. But then a sharp decline, again moving through to the to the 2010s. And the last few years, we've seen very few, uh, if any, of the older females in the population. So after we take all those data into account, the stock assessment model provides estimates of spawning stock biomass, which is on the left of this, the left axis of this graph, this graph, uh, and in the in the gray shaded, uh, under the gray shaded line. Um, this is the pounds of females in the spawning population, and on the right we have recruitment and numbers of fish that are age zero or or fish that were hatched in that year. Um, and you can the horizontal lines here, the dotted line is the uh, target level for spawning stock biomass. So that's where we would like to see the pounds of females in the population be above that line. Uh, and and the horizontal solid line is the threshold. And we don't want to see the number uh, or the pounds of females fall below that line. And you can see from this chart uh, from 2007 through 2017, the spawning stock biomass was below that threshold and certainly below the target, indicating that the stock was overfished and the abundance of females was too low to provide adequate recruitment and replacement of the population. Another result of the stock, stock assessment model is population abundance, uh, again shown in the, in the gray shaded area here and thousands of fish on the right axis and also fishing mortality rates or the rate at which fish are being removed from the population by fishing practices. And again, we have a target and threshold for that F or that fishing mortality shown by the uh, horizontal solid black line and horizontal dotted line and the fishing mortality rates. We want to be below those lines and you can see from 2004 through the end of the time series, fishing mortality was was constantly above the target and the threshold and and well, well above in 2012 as well as 2016. And when the fishing mortality rates are above the targets and thresholds, this indicates that overfishing is occurring and fish are being removed too quickly from the population. So as a result of that, stock status determination of overfishing and the stock was overfished, the most, the, the quickest uh, management measure we can use to respond to that is to reduce harvest. And so in 2021, we had to reduce harvest uh, for to 51,200 pound target uh, coming up this spring and the, the full year of 2021. And this is for all three fisheries, the Albemarle Sound fishery, 
as well as uh, commercial and recreational and the Roanoke River recreational fishery. And this quota is then divided in half with half of the quota being allotted to the Admiral Sound commercial fishery. And then that other half is divided again evenly between the Albemarle Sound recreational area uh, fishery and the Albemarle Sound management area and the Roanoke River recreational fishery. So for 2021 and 2022, the harvest quota for the Roanoke River management area will be only 12,800 pounds, which is a, a, a vast uh, reduction from what how we've been operating uh, in the last several years. This new quota was based on the reduction necessary to lower the fishing mortality rate to the target levels. And specifically, we needed to reduce harvest that was uh, observed in 2017 by 57%. So that's how we came, came up with the harvest reduction in the new quota. And this is, is uh, done to meet the target or the requirement of the fisheries management plan process to end overfishing within a two year period. So this, this reduction in the quota in the Roanoke River is going to require us to drastic, drastically reduce the harvest season uh, in the Roanoke River. Uh, by rule, we currently have a two-month harvest season that extends from the 1st of March to the last day of April. Um, and it's much too long to allow harvest and, and, and restrain harvest to 12,800 pounds. So fisheries uh, division staff met and came up with the plan to provide one week of harvest in what we call the lower zone of the Roanoke River, which is from US 258 to at Scotland Neck downstream to the mouth, and one week of harvest in the upper zone from that bridge at US 258 uh, upstream to Weldon and Roanoke Rapids to the dam at Roanoke Rapids Dam. Uh, and those, those weeks will be April 10th through the 16th in the lower river and April 24th to the 30th in the upper river. Um, and if you look at the calendar, that will harvest, the harvest will open on a Saturday and close the following Friday in each of those time periods. Uh, we felt like this was the best way to give anglers the opportunity to have, uh, to have access to harvest the fish while minimizing the poundage available and staying within that new quota of 12,800 pounds. We um, are working with uh, the director's office to provide a proclamation to open and close the seasons uh, to meet this plan, uh, but we will not be changing any size or creel limits. So the, the same size and creel limits of two fish per day and 18 to 22 inches with no fish in the 22 to 27 inch slot uh, per day will still be in effect. So the question, one of the questions we ask is why are we seeing such poor recruitment in the last few years and what which is leading to the lack of production and then the overfish status and we had many years of high recruitment to average recruitment from 97 through 2002 and then many poor or missing year classes and bad recruitment in 2003 2004 2009 2013 and then as i showed you on the graph four year classes in a row in 2017 18 and 19 and then 20 uh, where we just have very little reproduction and successful recruitment observed and one of the reasons why we see that reduction in recruitment in those poor years is related to stream flow in the Roanoke River. The Roanoke River is a is a uh, regulated river where there are three successive dams at the at the along the state line that control the stream flow coming down the river. Roanoke Rapids and Gaston dams are operated by Dominion, Dominion Energy. Um, and John H. Carr, which is operated by the Corps of Engineers, really provides the uh, and regulates the stream flow in the river downstream of Roanoke Rapids Dam. Um, both these agencies, uh, Dominion and the Army Corps of Engineers, do try to provide beneficial flows for striped bass spawning in the spring. However, uh, John H. Carr Dam is responsible for flood control and can um, provide up to 35,000 CFS into the lower river, which is a substantial flood uh, and we we know is detrimental to, to striped bass spawning in the spring. Um, here's a, a chart of a good year of stream flow in the Roanoke River. On the left there on the Y axis, you have cubic feet per second and that's stream flow moving down the down the river. Uh, and this is the, for the full calendar year from January through December of 2005. 
the green, red, and blue lines you see there are the are the range during uh, the spawning season for striped bass in the Roanoke, and we would really like to see the flows be around that red line from April into into June. Um, and you can see in 2005 we met that red line almost almost exactly, and we certainly stayed below the green line, which is the upper threshold of where we want to see the spawning flow. And in this particular year in 2005 was a great year for striped bass spawning and recruitment. The juvenile abundance index was 34.7, which is a really high number, and we had successful recruitment in 2005. On the other hand, here's a chart uh, of, of 2013, um, again with discharge and, and date. Uh, and in the spawning season, we had several flood events where the flow was substantially higher than that green threshold line of the upper spawning flow. And we even had high flood events going over 20,000 CFS in June and July. And subsequently, the juvenile abundance index for that year was 0 0.57. So very little recruitment, almost no fish were observed being produced in that year of those high flood events during 2013. And again, the last four years, this is a similar chart uh, of April through June time period for 2017, 18, 19, and 20. Um, and you can see we even went to 35,000 CFS, which is a, a really high flood event in 2017. Um, and we, we stayed above that target range nearly all of those years. And, so, and as you saw in the graph earlier, very little recruitment in those four years um, because of this high stream flow. And so this has led to the, the reductions in the recruitment and the ultimate reductions in abundance that we've seen in the last the last decade on the Roanoke is just a lot of high water events um, as well as high harvest events uh, to, to result in overfishing. So in summary for the Albemarle Roanoke uh, stock assessment, the, the stock assessment indicates overfish status and overfishing is, is still occurring. Uh, a lot of that is due to poor reproduction and recruitment over the last decade, and certainly the last four years have been some of the worst on record. Um, we've seen declines in adult abundance, as well as the large adult spawning females that are so critical to the population. Um, and stream flow conditions on the river have, have re uh, reduced the spawning biomass and population reduction because of poor recruitment. And ultimately, we have to reduce harvest in all the fisheries to try to end overfishing and rebuild the stock back to where uh, we want to see it in those target levels. It, I know I've spent a lot of time on Albemarle Roanoke, and I and I just uh, I didn't I don't have enough time to go into the CSMA in detail. The Tar Pamlico, Noose, and Cape Fear rivers all have um, populations of striped bass. They're much smaller populations than the Albemarle Roanoke stock, and currently they're maintained by stocking. Um, we, in cooperation with uh, the Edenton National Fish Hatchery and our Watha State Fish Hatchery, produce um, around 100,000 juveniles each year to be stocked into the Tar, Noose, and Cape Fear rivers. Um, and we have found uh, over with evaluations of those stocking programs over the years that these populations are mostly made up of fish that were stocked. There's very little natural reproduction and recruitment occurring in the Tar Pamlico, the Noose, and the Cape Fear rivers. Um, despite the fact that we've had a harvest moratorium or no harvest on the Cape Fear since 2008. And recently in 2019, we implemented with Division of Marine Fisheries a harvest moratorium in the Tar Pamlico and Noose Rivers as well. Uh, despite, despite those protections, we're seeing very little recruitment um, and natural reproduction occurring. And um, the hatchery fish make up anywhere from 41 to 95 percent of the population since we've really uh, got a good handle on on evaluating those programs in 2013. Um, our staff and the stock assessment that was done through the fisheries management plan uh, process continues to suggest there's high mortality, that fish are dying at a very fast rate in these systems. Um, and even though they're hatchery fish, they're being removed. Uh, until those moratoriums went into effect anyway. Um, and it's just keeping the numbers down. There's not enough spawning fish in these rivers to produce an, a naturally produced year class. Um, we could have another seminar, another, another presentation um, that goes into detail in the CSMA, and we probably should, and we should also have another seminar 
uh, that describes the evaluation process where we use genetics to, to tell us that a fish is stocked or not. Um, but again, in the interest of time, I won't go into a lot of details there, but um, just more ideas, David, to, um, to provide more information to staff and the public on our, on our evaluation of these stocks in the CSMA. So where do we go from here? The next steps for um, the, the estuarine striped bass management and management plan. Uh, we'll continue to monitor the populations and the performance of the reduced quota in the Albemarle Roanoke stock. Um, we will update the fisheries management plan with Division Marine Fisheries, uh, continue that in 2021, and we expect completion to occur in early 2022. Um, that fisheries management plan update will address the overfish status of the Roanoke or the Albemarle Roanoke stock, and as well as the mortality and poor recruitment in the Tar Pamlico, Noose, and Cape Fear. And, and through, but to address those issues, we will develop management strategies um, for all the stocks that are evaluated. Uh, and those, those strategies will be developed in conjunction with marine fisheries. Um, but of course, the possible management measures that will come from those management strategies that we bring to the commission and to the public for evaluation, you know, will be specific for inland waters uh, where we have the jurisdiction to control harvest and implement those strategies. And those should be coming in, in fall of 2021, but maybe not implemented in 2022 or even 2023 uh, as we go through our normal rulemaking procedures to implement any of those changes. So with that, I would, I'd just like to um, thank everyone for your attention and uh, be glad to answer any questions as they have come through. Thank, thanks, 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 Jeremy. That was a great presentation. Um, a very, very good demonstration of the uh, direct application of science to the management that the agency does. Um, if anybody has any questions for Jeremy, we've still got a still got a large line. Certainly there's some questions. Uh, if, you, if you have some, please put them in the chat box. Uh, but I will start out, I guess, with uh, going back to some of the approaches that you talked about for uh, addressing uh, the uh, overfishing and the, the lack of the recruitment. Um, I know that in uh, Almoral Sound recreational fisheries, I know that January 1st, the limit was reduced from two to one per person. And you talked about the reduction in the seasons in the upper and the lower Roanoke. Um, do you know if there's been any, any changes other than the total allowable uh, take in the um, fisheries that the commercial side can take? To, to address the commercial side along with the recreational side. Right, so they will um, they would they will manage the commercial fishery with the reduction in the total allowable landings. And so uh, normally that fishery is opened. Uh, the gillnet fishery is, dominates the commercial harvest in the Albemarle Sound, and those um, that that fishery will really not be opened until March when the American shad season opens. Um, the current the current gillnet regulations in uh, coastal waters really has really reduced the amount of time they can fish the nets that they use to catch striped bass, and so um, that that harvest will be allowed on a on a more uh, restricted calendar this year than than in previous years, mainly because the flounder season is closed. Um, as well as uh, the need to remove nets to to reduce uh, Atlantic sturgeon interactions and sea turtle interactions. Uh, so, so that is how they will manage the commercial fishery, just with a, a reduced time period that those nets are allowed to fish. And then they also monitor the quota on a on a daily basis. Uh, the the fish houses have to report the landings that they that they see and so they will close the fishery to striped bass harvest when they reach that new quota that they're operating under as well. All right, thank you. Um, got a couple of questions coming through. I'll just uh, I'll just go down through these. Um, what are the potential management measures for the fall of 2021? So in the Albemarle Roanoke and the Roanoke River specifically, you know, uh, the only management measure that we're implementing is reducing the season 
length for recreational harvest in the Roanoke uh, to that one week in the, it was a two week season, but one week in the lower and one week in the upper as a way to uh, restrict harvest to our new quota of 12,800 pounds. And we will operate our creel surveys to estimate that harvest uh, as usual in those open weeks. Um, but that um, our our commissioners and our director only has proclamation authority to open and close seasons. Anything else that we change has to be done through the rulemaking process, which, as most of you know, is, is not a quick process. So the way we can meet that reduced quota requirement in 2021 is to reduce the season down to what we have proposed. All right, great. Next question. Um, is the Tar Pamlico noose and Cape Fear flows preventing natural recruitment the same as it is limiting in the uh, Albemarle and the Roanoke? Um, the short answer is no, we don't think so. Uh, they're much different systems. They're not as regulated um, as the Roanoke is with Car Dam. Um, the Tar Pamlico is not regulated at all. There are some dams on the river, but they're not flood control dams. They are uh, run of the river dams. Um, so in the Tar Pam, we get we get what the rainfall gives us uh, as far as stream flow goes. Uh, the noose does have some regulation through Falls Dam. Um, however, it's a much smaller uh, portion of the stream flow than we see uh, that Car Dam has control in the Roanoke and the Cape Fear as well has Jordan um that regulates flow somewhat but again it's a much smaller percentage of regulated flow in the cape fear the issues in the cape fear really stem from the locks and dams that are present on the river uh, striped bass um, don't move past lock and dam one very um, easily and they are not um they don't have access to their historic spawning grounds which is in the Smiley Falls area upstream of, of Lock and Dam 3. So the, those low head locks and dams really prevent striped bass in the Cape Fear from making their, their full historic um, spawning migration. In the noose, it's, they, they have full access to the river now to, their, to get to their spawning grounds uh, with, with removal of low head dams over the last 20 years. With the habitat conditions have really improved in the noose, but we, we don't think it's flow that's limiting recruitment in the noose either. Right now, it's 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 a spawning stock biomass issue where there just aren't enough females to produce enough eggs to overcome all the um, the the uh, survival um, and well the mortality of a of an egg to a larvae to a juvenile is so great. You just need a lot of eggs in the system to be able to produce a natural year class, and we don't have those occurring in those three systems at the moment. OK, and that may that may lead right into the next question, which is, is there a goal to increase natural recruitment in the Tar Pamlico, Noose and Cape Fear systems? Yes, there is that goal uh, where we have part of the fisheries management plan process evaluates the goals and objectives of the plan. Um, currently, the, the goal is to have a natural reproducing population capable of providing sustainable harvest. So that is the goal. Uh, which is why the moratorium has been um, implemented as a way to reduce all targeted mortality. There are other management measures that can that will um, be implemented to reduce, you know, bycatch mortality um, and non-target mortality, such as D Division of Marine Fisheries removed all gill nets from the ferry line uh, on the Tar and the Noose Rivers upstream. So there's no gill netting activity allowed at the moment as a way to reduce bycatch for striped bass and those non-targeted fisheries. Um, so yeah, there is that goal to provide that self-sustaining natural recruitment in the Tar Noose and the Cape Fear. All right, next question. Do you have a sense of the actual mechanism for the egg mortality associated with the high flow events? Uh, for example, inadequate incubation time, physical abrasion, adults actually not spawning under those flows, et cetera. Yeah, I mean, we have um, we have ideas of what we're what we think is happening. Um, mostly we think the eggs and the larvae are deposited out in the floodplain during those flood events um, and the dissolved oxygen is 
is too low uh, in the floodplain environments. The eggs settle out and they don't move downstream in their in their normal fashion. We we don't have a um, definite answer to that question, uh, but we do have some pretty well informed um, ideas of that. That's what's happening. Uh, we know when we have a flood, we have dissolved oxygen either sags or crashes, and uh, it's just not um, not good environment for eggs and larvae to to survive all right are there any plans to open the season on the cape fear near near wilmington since most are hatchery fish so we are evaluating whether um whether we should open harvest um in the cape fear um we do know like you said that that nearly all the fish in the Cape Fear are hatchery fish. Uh, we also know they have limited ability to migrate to their spawning grounds because of, of the locks and dams. However, we we have in the in recent years, like the last two years, uh, working with marine fisheries, we have found some evidence of natural recruitment. Um, some some young fish that we sent to be evaluated came back as wild fish, not produced by our hatcheries. And so there is a possible, um, we don't have enough data on the Northeast Cape Fear to know if there's a, a spawning run um, that's actually being s somewhat successful in Northeast Cape Fear. So the short answer is we are evaluating through the fisheries management plan process um, the potential to open harvest on the hatchery fish in the Cape Fear and, and what that would look like and where that harvest might occur. There is some, um, There's some concern of opening harvest in the Wilmington area because of those possibly wild produced fish from Northeast Cape Fear that we know use that Wilmington area of the the um, that area where Northeast Cape Fear and the Cape Fear uh, come together around Wilmington. But we are we are evaluating that through the fisheries management plan process with the MF. All right, um, why not just close the season for a year? Well, that is one possibility. We do think um, that the you know the model tells us and the data tells us that that the population can sustain a moderate level of harvest. Um, so, in we know there are anglers, our constituents that enjoy harvesting striped bass, um, and we feel like the reduced quota will give us uh, the opportunity to do both: pr protect the fish. Uh, and, and restrict harvest and lower mortality while still providing um, a, a short season of harvest opportunity to those anglers that um, that desire to do that. OK, great. Um, is the season, uh, excuse me, is the size limit, possession limit and slot limit going to be the same as it has in the past during the two weeks the season is open? And I'm taking that to mean the two week season on the Roanoke. Yes, um, yes, everything will be the same with the exception of the opening and closing dates of the harvest season. So the, the size limits and the creel and the creel limit will all be the same as it is in rule. OK, um, next question are, are you or the law enforcement division <clears throat> concerned about gunnel to gunnel pressure on the Albemarle Roanoke this spring due to such a short season? Well, I can't speak for the law enforcement division. I ha we haven't, um, I don't, I don't, I haven't talked to them about all their concerns, but there certainly will be a, uh, a increased effort during that open season. Part of the reason we did consider that um, increase in effort um, during such a short season and in, 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 in how we um, open the season. Um, you know, there are other there were other options we evaluated with providing just a couple of days a week um, or or opening, you know, not having the split season by river. But um, again, we've we've had these season reductions in the past and we've gotten angler input on what they want to see. Uh, and we feel like the seven days at a time is is the most the most beneficial and most desired by the, the feedback we've received in the past. Um, but yeah, there will certainly be uh, a, a, a derby type 
um, presence and experience that we see at the boat ramps during the open season. Um, but I think I think we can handle that with the um, with the improvements that have been made at, at the boat ramps. Uh, they're able to handle more traffic now, especially the welding ramp. Um, and the fish may still be spread out some in in that April season, especially in the lower river, and that'll help spread out the effort up and down the river. There is a chance um, that that the fish will not be available for harvest um, when we don't think they will be as abundant because of those few uh, uh, poor year classes we've seen in the last three to four years. And so those those fish that are normally providing harvest are the three, four, and five-year-old fish, and those fish are just going to be not very abundant this year. And so, um, you know, that's another way that the harvest will be reduced is because because of the status of the stock, the fish are not going to be as available as they are in, in some of those good years that we saw in the 2000s. All right, Jeremy, um, could the herring recruitment rate affect the striped bass recruitment? Yeah, I mean that that's another another um, population that we is that is currently uh, at still at historic lows. Uh, river herring in the Albemarle Sound, you know, historically were uh, very abundant and are certainly a, a food source for striped bass. Um, we the answer to that question, I guess, is we don't know, but they certainly are related. Um, you know, this striped bass population does need a food source and um, I don't think it's affecting recruitment um, and and in fact we see you know the fish that we see in the river are are very healthy there's no indication that there's not a not an adequate food source for the population size that we have so they're certainly related but um, we really we really can't say you know if one is is causing the other All right, that's great. Thanks. Uh, that's all the questions we have in the chat box, Jeremy. So I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of wrap it up and and thank you again for uh, for being here for for doing this presentation. As I said when you concluded, uh, I think it's a really really good example of our agency and our staff uh, putting a lot of effort into collecting a lot of really high quality data for a long time. Uh, and then applying those data to the to the management of our resources that our that our agency is responsible for. Uh, and by the way, I appreciate you giving me ideas for two more webinars. And later offline, we can talk about who you think would be best to do those. Um, but anyway, with that, uh, again, great job. I appreciate everybody being here and everybody logging in. We had really good turnout. We had a lot of interest. Uh, and with that, I hope everybody has a good rest of your day. Stay safe and we'll uh, we'll see you next time.